let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you why the Republican Party will always lose when it comes to critical race theory and, and the woke in general, because of course the woke nonsense is much bigger than just critical race theory, but that's like the big flagship issue, right? Let me tell you why the Republican Party will always lose. They will always lose because, well, for two reasons. One, they do not understand that the Democrats are not playing by the rules. The Democrats are not playing nice. There is no etiquette. There is no, there are no ethics in how the Democrats are fighting this battle. They will do whatever it takes to win whenever it needs to happen. They will lie. They will cheat. They will steal. They will change their position on a dime, depending what is the most con politically convenient, and they will not feel one shade bad about doing it. They will do whatever it takes. They've shown this to us. They've shown this to us in everything that they have done over the course of the last year. They have no shame about any of it. The Republicans do not understand that they are playing by different rules. That is the first reason they will always lose. The second reason is that they are unwilling to do what is required to fight back. They are unwilling to stand up and to say that this is wrong, and if you are not opposed to this, then you are supporting it and allowing it to happen. That is what they're doing. That is what they're doing on the state level. That is what they're doing on the national level. And it is goddamn infuriating that these people are more interested in playing politics and playing nice and intellectualizing with the anti-woke intellectuals and talking up here as though this is going to solve the problem. And while they're doing that, the Democrats and the woke are taking over every major institution in this country and have been for decades. This is why these weak-willed Republicans are why we are in this situation to goddamn begin with because they have no spine, they have no backbone, and they don't fight back. Let me give you a concrete example of what I'm talking about. I was emailing back and forth all day with a Republican strategist, strategist in the state of New Hampshire who shall remain nameless for the moment. Cause I got, I don't even care guys. I don't care that I'm, t that I'm kind of aligned with the Republicans on this issue for this bill in New Hampshire. If, if they think for one red second that I have loyalty to them when they have allowed this to happen for years, I will absolutely call this out. But for the moment, he's going to remain nameless. Because I just think he doesn't know. I think he doesn't know. He is coming from a place of ignorance. But I've been emailing back and forth with this person all day. And the question that he wanted an answer to was this. He said, Carlin, has, does, does Maggie Hassan support critical race theory? And I go, yes. Obviously, Maggie Hassan supports critical race theory. I don't even know why this is a question. There is not one elected representative in the Democratic Party in either the House or the Senate that I am aware of that opposes critical race theory. There is not one. Maybe Tulsi Gabbard did when she was still in office, but she ain't in office anymore. I cannot think of one elected representative that is in the Democratic Party that is either in the House of Representatives or in the United States Senate that opposes critical race theory. And they're doing one of two things. Either they are downright supporting it they're supporting it in the federal government. They're supporting it in federal government agencies. They were against Donald Trump's executive order banning it, or they just aren't saying anything. And I'm sorry, in, 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 in a reality where children as young as five years old are being taught that they're racist in their schools because they are white, staying silent is implicit support. And there's nothing that you will do to convince me otherwise. If you have not spoken out on this issue, that means you support it. It means you support teaching children that they are racist. It means you support teaching those children that their parents are racist. It means you support it from, from top to bottom in every instance where it is happening. So I don't know if Maggie Hassan is supporting it explicitly or implicitly. I don't know. And I don't particularly care. I don't care either way. The reality is, though, that she, like, I am not aware of statements that she has made any 
single way about it, which means for me, she minimally implicitly supports it. Now, this was not good enough for this Republican strategist. And he was like, he kept emailing. It's like, well, do you know of statements of, of her saying that she supports it? No, dude, I'm not going to go do your goddamn homework for you. I have like 5,000 things on my plate. I don't like, no. Like, I, like, you obviously don't have the balls to fight back. Why would I spend my time going through all of Maggie Hassan's public statements? I have no idea whether she's issued a, a specific public statement explicitly endorsing it because she's implicitly endorsing it, and that's enough for me. Well, well, I, I just, I cannot. I cannot do anything if she has not issued a public statement. I'm sorry, what? What? Are you actually in this fight? Do you actually, do, and this is the way, this is, this is why Matt Mowers, who is the person that ran in my congressional di district last time and lost to Chris Pappas, this is why Matt Mowers, who is about to run again, I don't know if he will have competition, well, I actually know he does, I know minimally he has one other person running against him already, this is why a Republican running for Congress in New Hampshire is not required to make a public statement opposing critical race theory, this right here, because we seem to think that if someone hasn't made a public statement on it, that then then we just don't know their position. We do know their position. We know Maggie Hassan's position on critical race theory. Maggie Hassan obviously supports it. Otherwise, she would have come out in opposition. But no, no, this isn't good enough for this Republican strategist who is probably sipping his tea with his pinky out like this because he doesn't want to fight back. He doesn't want to put on his big boy pants and fight back in the way that this needs to be fought. And I'm not going to say that every Republican is like this because they're not. There are Republicans who are fighting back. Look at look at look at the guy who introduced the bill in New Hampshire. He's fighting back. He's actually doing something about it. But the vast majority of Republicans won't. They won't. They won't speak up and then they'll make excuses for why they can't. And then they'll complain, "Oh, my kids are being taught this in school." Well, you wonder why cuz you didn't fight back. You didn't fight back. I'm going to bring up another issue. Let's talk about boycotts for a second because uh, apparently Republicans are boycotting every single company under the sun. Are any of them actually writing to the companies and telling them why they're boycotting them? No. What they're doing is posting on Twitter, I will never, I will never buy Coke again. I will never buy Coke again. I will never go to another Major League Baseball game. They're tweeting about it, but are they reaching out and doing what the activists on the left do? No, the activists, the reason that these businesses are doing this is because activists on the left are hammering them, hammering them. They're communicating to them, say, if you don't do X, Y, B, and Z, then we're going to do, we're going to boycott you, blah, 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 And that's all they're hearing from is from the left. And then the, then the company responds and says, okay, we're going to, we're going to do X, Y, B, and Z because all these people want us to do X, Y, B, and Z. And then they do it and the Republicans are like, how dare you? You have betrayed us. And then they boycott them by tweeting something out, but they never get in touch with the company to say, here is why I'm not buying your product anymore. And they wonder why these companies don't listen to them. They wonder why the companies support the left. Well, you aren't doing anything. Sending out a tweet and saying you're boycotting them is not doing anything. And I'm sorry, these boycotts, they never work. They never work. Can you name me one boycott? And please, again, in the comments, in the comments below, can you name me one boycott that has ever been successful? One? No, you probably can't because they aren't. And now apparently the Republicans are boycotting every single major airline. Like, this is why you lose. This is why you lose, because you go behind your anonymous Twitter accounts and you don't and you say, I'm never buying Coke again. But you never email Coke to say, I'm not buying your product because of X, Y, B and Z. You don't organize to do it in public. You don't organize. They don't see you. They don't hear from you and you expect them to respond to you. It's just so ridiculous. This is why the left is going to win, because people are not speaking up. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you are scared. I'm sorry that you're worried about losing your job. I am sorry, dude. But at this point, if you are not explicitly speaking out in some way, shape, or form, then you're sitting on the sidelines, man. You're sitting on the sidelines and you're no use to me. And I don't care if you've got an R next to your name or a D next to your name or you're a libertarian or you're an independent or what the hell. I do not care. 
I don't care. I will align with anyone of any political persuasion that wants to speak out and fight back against this. I don't care if you're on the left. I don't care if you're on the right. This is a bigger picture issue. And I'm sorry, man. If, if Republican strategists are thinking that just because someone is quiet about this issue, then obviously they don't support it if they haven't come out in obvious support of it. Dude, you are a horrible strategist. I'm sorry. This is why the Republicans lose. This is why Donald Trump was such a breath of fresh air for the Republicans. Because finally, finally... The people had someone fighting for them and was willing to call it as he saw it, not listen to these strategies like, oh, you really, oh, you, Trump, you shouldn't say that. Oh my God. And this is why every single Republican candidate who does not come out strong against this, I don't even care if you win, man. I don't care if you win. Don't care. Don't care. Would rather have a Democrat than someone who is not willing to speak out when their children are being taught that they are racist. Like, if you're not willing to speak out when that is happening, like, what are you willing to speak out for? I'm honestly just curious. What are you actually willing to put on your big boy pants for? You know? I don't even have kids. I don't even have kids. I don't have kids in the schools. But I'm, but somehow I'm still mustering the courage to speak out while all these other Republicans are sitting on the side and saying, we really shouldn't say that. We shouldn't say that. It's not nice. It's not nice. We should be polite. We need to be polite to our political opponents, even though they're teaching your kids that they are racist. That's why you're going to lose, man. That's why you're going to lose. The squeaky wheel gets the grease and the Democrats are the squeakiest of all and they are constantly shouting and constantly speaking up and constantly pushing back and constantly organizing and this is why the republican party needs people like me and they need other people on the left to teach them how to god damn find their fucking balls and push back because it ain't gonna get one in the way that you're playing it and i don't know what else to tell you man i don't know what else to tell you the Democrats are not playing nice. The Demo is this is like this is like when Black Lives Matter and Antifa was destroying cities all summer and 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 nothing happened to them. Absolutely nothing. And then January 6th happens when the vast majority of that crowd was actually peaceful and, the, and they're probably like, oh, please, please don't hurt us. Don't, please don't hurt. We're so sorry. We're so sorry. We're so sorry. I mean, we know. I mean, I know we let you burn down our cities all summer, but we're so sorry. I don't condone any, th any violence ever in any circumstance, but the, like, the weakness of so many of those people who are willing to denounce their own voters rather than pushing back and speaking the truth and saying, no, that is not what happened. That is not what ha That is not the truth. This is why Republican voters hate their representatives. Matt Mowers better damn well hope I choose not to run for Congress. I don't know, man. Because I would, I would kick, I, Matt, I would kick your ass up and down New Hampshire. I know you got another opponent, and I don't really know if I want to run for Congress, so we're going to have to see. But, dude, find your balls and speak out. You know, it's funny. Someone, someone offered, like, privately today to arrange a phone call between between Matt Mowers and I so Matt could explain his position on critical race theory in private and I mailed back I was like no not interested I want him to make a public goddamn statement why isn't he making a statement he's obviously gonna run for congress again why isn't he making a statement if you can't stand up when it matters then what the hell are you doing and Republicans, why are you still voting for these people? I know. I understand. I understand that it might take a couple of cycles of losing. I got it. I get it. But the reason that you're in this position is you voted in spineless representatives 
in the first place. That is why so many of you love Donald Trump for so, for so, so much. Because you voted in spineless representatives over and over and over and over and over and over again. And then all of a sudden you had someone that was telling the truth and that was having your back and fighting on your behalf. And you're like, oh my God, this is the best. And now you're going back to wanting spineless representatives again? I don't understand why you do this. Stop electing horrible candidates. Stop running horrible, spineless candidates who won't speak up and fight back. And if you don't have a good candidate to vote for, then don't vote for all or vote libertarian or vote something else. But stop voting for these people. If you are voting for these people, then you are giving them permission to do this. And that's why you lose. That's why you lose every damn time. That's all I got.